Victoria has a new leader after the departure of one of the country's most controversial politicians. Loved and hated in equal proportions, Dan Andrews has gone. Joining me from Bondi Partners is former Howard Government Minister Peter McGoran. He's gone. Yes, the, the most reviled figure in Australian politics of modern times has departed. Um, you say loved and uh, hated in equal measure. I don't think so, Tim. Well, in, <laughs> in Victoria, well, he just got elected, continued to be elected. There, there, someone was doing it. Have you met anybody who voted for him? I haven't. Uh, nobody will own up to him. Look, he was authoritarian, uh, autocratic in regard to his own party, and you can see that from the breakout of independence by the right wing since he left only a few days ago. Um, his legacy will live on. It's a very mixed one on infrastructure. He was good on some things but couldn't manage the money. But overall, uh, Australians are breathing a sigh of relief. There does seem to be that, doesn't there? Like, even more recently, the Commonwealth Games, only $380 million not to have the Commonwealth Games. And then since then, we worked out it was going to be a lot more. So his uh, successor has inherited... A whole lot of debt. Jacinta Allen, dead right. $170 billion net government debt. The, the, Victoria can't repay that. Um, I do think one of the things that would have influenced Daniel Andrews' decision was that he is going to have to reverse many other big announcements, such as the, the circular metro rail link around uh, Melbourne that's projected to be $150 billion. And I don't think after the Commonwealth Games he could have taken a hit like that. Jacinta Allen's interesting. She, uh, people would be surprised to know she's been in Parliament for 24 years and a minister for 20, and she's completely unknown. So she has towed the party line and uh, particularly the Andrews line for I many years I don't mind that, now. though, do you? I mean, I, I don't want a personality or, a, a, like, a, a cultivated personality to be the leader. Um, true, but is she competent? Has she ever struck out on her own? What's she known for major policy issues, Tim? All right, we'll give her a chance, and she deserves a chance, but there's nothing in her record that would suggest she's going to be very much different to Daniel Andrews. My problem with his leadership, and we spoke about it in this very studio over the course of the past four years, not every politician can be Winston Churchill. Not every politician can offer hope to those at the most difficult times... But his manner and the way that he conducted himself in media conferences, and we've seen the, 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 the mental health issues in Victoria, it just, it, it offered no hope. It offered nothing. It was like this was going to last forever. So young people growing up in that space, it was awfully difficult. He was unnecessarily brutal. No question. Uh, during COVID and since COVID. And, and that's because he, de he debased politics in Victoria. Remember, there were four corruption inquiries, none of which he came out of smelling roses, and any one of the four would have spelt the death knell for a New South Wales Premier. <laughs> As we know, they can go on a bottle of wine. So um, I'm sorry I'm struggling uh, to find reasons to uh, cheer Daniel Andrews. Well, don't, don't, yeah, don't apologise, because <laughs> I'm happy he's gone too. And, and, I, and I think that that whole, that mental health space in, in Melbourne yeah. is, is a real issue. It's a huge issue right now, and it will be for the next few years. Well, we've both got large families mm. in Melbourne and Victoria, and we, we know it's affected, particularly young people. Mm. There is a lingering, almost post-traumatic stress yeah. issue, and Melbourne's far, far from re regaining its former vibrancy. Yeah, OK, let's change subjects to Qantas. <laughs> Maybe not a huge change, because... Uh, Alan Joyce has gone, no one can find him! <laughs> no one can find him! And, and Qantas, uh, the new boss, Vanessa Hudson, has, has inherited what he's left behind. Well, here I agree with you. Vanessa Hudson clearly is not a charismatic, flamboyant character in the way Alan Joyce was, but I think that's a good thing. I think Qantas now needs a highly competent administrator and financial uh, brain like she is and she was there as uh, chief financial officer for many many years so Jacinta Allen I don't think in politics has the luxury of being dull and uh, uninspiring but Vanessa Hudson has so I think that's a strength. I hope Vanessa Hudson has the humanity um, for her employees I really hope that that shines through because that hasn't been very prevalent the last few years. 
Correct, yeah. and, and 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 including yeah. um, their customers, because you and I have spoken in past yeah. weeks. Who's going to win out? The investors, the shareholders, or the customers? Clearly, the investors have won. Yeah, there needs to be a marriage there. They're, they're, everyone. Now, what about the US? Oh, what about the hot bed of drama? Uh, it's just it's almost like a mini series, day in day out. Kevin McCarthy. I don't know how long he can hang on for his job. Uh, hang on to his job. It's not a job anyone else wants. That might be the way he keeps it, but. Um, this shutdown is going to happen, it looks like. Yes, and it has happened in the past, mm. and this is where federal public servants, except those in emergency frontline services, have to take unpaid leave. Mind you, they get paid in arrears. So, to tell you the truth, it's not a big issue for the... as big issues you might think for the civil servants. It's a big issue for people who want to use national parks, use the facilities, visit the monuments. They all close down. So, it will affect the economy for sure. But... Kevin McCarthy can't control his caucus because there is a rump. I don't know how many you'd say. You'd have to say up to 20 who are the extreme of the Trump base. Now, that's saying something. Mm. Oh, absolutely. Now, getting back home to Sydney, what about Sydney Mayor Clover Moore and her eye-watering $47 million staff fund? It's more than the entire city's affordable housing plan. But she's a law unto herself. She just uh, The voting system in Sydney, uh, which is basically just inner city, uh, inner suburban, uh, leftist-leaning uh, residents, at plus some property owners, means she just gets elected. How long's it? How long's she been there? Twenty-five years. Everyone's forgotten about Clovermore, and she's to the left of the Greens. Mm. Or certainly, if that's an exaggeration, she is the equivalent of the Greens. There's no interest in small business, no interest in motorists, no interest in job creation. She's just a self-perpetuating monopoly. Not a huge interest in sport either, which, uh, you know, is a, is a corner of the world that you and I both love. Yeah. Grand finals this weekend. Is it going to be Collingwood? Is it going to be Brisbane? Is it going to be Penrith? Is it going to be Brisbane? What are your tips? Collingwood and Broncos. Collingwood and Broncos. And, of course, Epsom Day today over the famous Ramwick Mile. Yeah. We've got three Group 1s. We've got the two-year-olds in the Breeders' Plate and the Gym Crack. We've got the Premier Stakes, which is the, the last saloon for potential Everest run. It's a huge day, isn't it? Brilliant. Brilliant. You don't know where to look on, at Royal Randwick Racecourse. There's magnificent animals everywhere and top competing sports, pen, sports people in trainers and jockeys. Yeah, absolutely. Cannot wait for it. And I'll see you out there, of course. Uh, Peter is the you chairman do. of the Australian Turf Club. I do a lot of work for the Turf Club and I cannot wait to get to Royal Randwick. Good to see you. Thanks, Tim.